Can you think of, of actors that you've worked with, some of the more surreal experiences? Elvis Presley and King Creole, was that uh, a little bit of a different movie to work on? Well, that was acting for me, you know. I was playing Maxie Fields, the gangster. Gangly. What was your, your impressions of Elvis? Well, actually, he was a very modest kid, or at least he behaved that way with me, and uh, very polite. The uh, first thing he said to me was, Mr. Mathaw, he said, if you could help me out with this acting, I sure would appreciate it. And I said, Elvis, I've seen you act. You don't need any help from me. Well, I have a, one question about your stand-up days uh, when you were in Las Vegas. Is it true that Elvis Presley came and visited you backstage once? Yes. Yes. He, I was opening the show for Ann Margaret, and he knew Ann Margaret. And he came backstage, and he passed by me in the hall, and he looked at me, and he said, Son, you have an oblique sense of humor. <laughs> what was your reaction to that? I was just like, thank you, Mr. Presley. <laughs> now, Whitney, your mother, quite a singer in her own right. Mm -hmm. Now, she was a member of the Sweet Inspirations yes. uh, group that backed up uh, Elvis Presley. Now, uh, what memories do you have of that? <laughs> um, I, I remember when, um, I remember when I was, I really don't know what, how old I was at the time, but I remember my mother uh, receiving a phone call from whomever Elvis had employed to call people, whatever. And um, saying that he wanted the sweets back to do his comeback show in Vegas. I remember my mother uh, being very enthusiastic about it, but very concerned that she'd have to leave her children for a month. And um, I remember her, she was so like, you know, well, you know, her, her, whole, her whole thing was, you know, mommy loves you and mommy wants to stay home, but mommy's got to go to work to make sure that you have this and make sure that you all are taken, well, well taken care of. So me and daddy have to go. And we, you know, my, my father was my mother's manager. Me and daddy have to go and, you know, um, that whole thing. And I just remember um, how she was leaving, how she really didn't want to leave us, you know, but she had to go. And I remember that month, and I remember all the hoopla about Elvis in Vegas, Elvis in Vegas. And I was so proud that my mother was there with him, you know, because it was a very big event. Yeah. I'm the kid who kicks Elvis in the shins. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I've done with my life, I guess. It was uh, really the only reason I had a chance at it was uh, um, a casting woman named Joyce Selznick who uh, said, I think, uh, I think I've got an idea for this. I think mm -hmm. I've got an idea of a guy who could play it. And I, Joyce and I knew each other from having uh, met with each other five or six times mm -hmm. on different projects. I'd never done a show, uh, never been hired by Joyce. And uh, it was basically her idea. And and it worked. And it worked. Yeah. I know you, you've always been fascinated with Elvis Presley. Mm. Uh, if you could, if he was still alive, and you two were to sit down, like, what would you talk about? I don't know. You know, one of the things that's fascinating about Elvis is uh, is how he became consumed by fame and how fame destroyed him. That's one of the things that's fascinating. I mean, it, I mean, I have the regular fan thing too, where you know, I like the Jailhouse Rock number. But uh, what's fascinating about him as I've become older, you know, and it's gotten past, you know, oh, he looks, he's cool, Elvis. It's like, wow, everything, you know, and how the people around him just let him destroy himself and, and how he was still famous. And then after he's dead, then you hear all of this stuff, you know, it's like, wow, all that was going on when we was thinking he was super cool Elvis, you know. So it was just, it's just, Elvis is fascinating just because it's like, this is what fame can do to you, you know.